What's up guys, it's Taylor and I'm back with another video. This video is going to be another true crime video. I decided to do another one this week and just see how both of those last videos go and then if y'all like it then I'll continue to do them. This true crime video is probably not going to be as good I guess you can say as my last one because I had an incident that happened earlier in the week and it just kind of ruined my week and I'm trying to get back on track but I'm working on it and I'm almost got everything together so just bear with me until next week and I will be coming out with a really good video for y'all next week. I'm trying to think of some good ideas that y'all would like so I could film it for y'all to enjoy. So this true crime case is actually going to be a while back instead of more recently. I decided that it would be interesting to go kind of back to a while ago because even back then this kind of stuff happened and it's actually really terrifying. So this true crime case is about the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders. I'm not sure if any of y'all have ever heard about this before but I didn't and when I came across it it was just like I couldn't believe a person could actually do this to little girls. The murders took place on June 13th in 1977 in Mays County, Oklahoma. And there were three girls, ages ranged from 8 to 10, that were raped and murdered while they were on a Girl Scout camping trip. I'm going to read off the name of the girls and their ages just so y'all know who they are. Please forgive me if I pronounce any of these names wrong because I have not actually heard their names being said. I just read it on the internet. And also, I do get all my information from the internet and the internet alone. So if I make any mistakes, please correct me in the comments below. The three girls that got murdered, they were all Girl Scouts and they were going to Camp Scott on a Girl Scout summer camping trip. The first girl's name was Lori Farmer and she was eight years old. The second girl's name was Michelle Gus and she was nine years old. And the third girl's name was Doris Miller and she was 10 years old. So all three of these girls went on the camping trip together. They had actually not even ever known each other. They had just met all of each other earlier that day. So they had absolutely no clue who each other was, but they became really close friends and got along really well. I'm really sorry you guys, my camera died. As I was saying, when I was reading about the this happening, I believe it said that the girls did two of the girls didn't really want to go to the camp begin with their parents didn't really force them to go but more of talked them into going to the camp so these three girls was in tent number eight which was the furthest tent from the girl scout counselors so this is basically why whoever did this planned this attack on these girls. The Girl Scout counselors basically couldn't hear all the, wouldn't have been able to hear all the ruckus from that far away. So around 6 p.m. on June 12th, a thunderstorm came in and so basically the Girl Scouts just all went back to their tents with their friends sat in their tents and talked and hung out. These girls decided to write letters to their parents. So they were writing letters to their parents right before they went to bed for the night. Around 12 o'clock that night before the murders had happened, one of the Girl Scout camp counselors heard a noise that had woken her. So she got up and she did a check of the tents and everything looked fine so she disregarded it and went back to sleep. The next morning on June 13th, one of the Girl Scout counselors was heading to the showers and where the girls were staying at in tent number 8, there 
tent was furthest, furthest from the Girl Scout counselor's tent, but it was closer to the shower. So when the Girl Scout counselor was heading to the showers, she saw three sleeping bags and she said it looked like something was in them but however she did not look in them she went and got help and got the other girl scout counselor so police and ambulance was called to the camp and when they got there they did look in the sleeping bags and find out that the girls bodies was in the sleeping bags the bodies were taken away and an autopsy was done on all three of the girls to see how they have passed I believe it said one girl was strangled I don't remember what happened to the other two girls but I do remember I think one was strangled to death and that is how she passed all three of them were raped however and um, it was very sad finding out about like a person actually doing this to these young girls. So now I'm going to kind of back up the story a little bit because two months before these murders happened, there was actually a note left, we think by the murderer who did it, two months before he actually did it. So a camp counselor who is over the camp was on the camp one day and she had a box of donuts and her things. She left, I believe, to go to the showers real quick and when she came back, she realized that her stuff had been looked through and the donut box was empty and there was a note inside the box. This note inside the donut box said that whoever wrote this note said that they were going to kill three young campers. The camp counselor disregarded the note and just went on about her usual day. She took the note as more of a joke. She didn't take it seriously. She thought maybe kids were pranking her or something, so she didn't contact police or anything until two months later after the murders she told them what she had found. So in this case, they did have one prime suspect and the man's name is Gene Hart. Gene Hart was a previous prisoner that had escaped. He was in prison for raping and murdering, I believe, two other women, and I think the women were pregnant at the time. So he was in jail for that. However, he had escaped and they had not found him. However, 10 months after the murders of these three girls, Jean Hart was found and arrested. Police finally found where Jean Hart was staying, which was in a kind of like a little cabin in the woods and so they took him into custody and started to question him. He was tried in court for the three Girl Scout murders. However, the jury pleaded him not guilty, but he was returned back to prison for his previous murders of the two other pregnant women. Of course, when Gene Hart was found, his DNA was tested to see if it matched up with the DNA they found on the crime scene of the three Girl Scout murders. However, his DNA test came back inconclusive, which pretty much means it's not a strong enough, I guess, DNA sample to match it up. So he was let off with that and he was not guilty for it. While Gene Hart was in prison, he died of a heart attack on June 4th, 1979. However, as technology became more advanced in 2002 and also in 2007, his DNA was tested to see if they could get a better match on if he did kill the three little Girl Scouts. However, it still came back inconclusive and they couldn't get a closure on it. After these murders, the camp was shut down and it has never been reopened again and really no one goes to the camp. I did see that ghost hunters and paranormal investigators 
do go to the camp because they believe the three little girls haunt the camp. However, somehow I just kind of find that as disrespectful because if the little girls are still there, they might want to just be left alone or left in peace, but I mean that is neat that they do go there to investigate that kind of stuff. They have still to this day not found out who killed the three little girls, but I really hope they do find out who did it someday because it would really give all three of their families closure and peace and honestly maybe that's what the little girls need to because that's just something horrible to go through and I really don't understand why anyone would do that but as I said before back then and now we live in a crazy society where people do crazy things and we just really need to be aware of our surroundings and watch out for one another when we go out to different places like this. That is all the information I have for the Oklahoma Girl Scout murder case. If you have any more information, please leave it in the comments down below and I would love to read about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, please stay safe out there. Be aware of your surroundings. Be there for one another if you see someone that needs help. Please like go help them, call police, something because we live in a crazy world and crazy stuff happens. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I love y'all and I will see y'all in next week's video.